I'm pimp C, bitch. I'm what you need. I got the something. I got cocaine and some weed. Something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Number two. What goes up must come down. Oh, you're going to have me cursing on this interview, huh? <laughs> no, you can you can bleep uh, it out. You can bleep it out. Uh, these bitches talking shit. Drop it to the drop it to the ground. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Julie, you're two for two on the show. You're doing a great job. Number three, Sweet Jones in a foreign car. Uh, riding like a motherfucking superstar. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's from one of uh that's from uh that great story that's in the from book. Crunk, yeah. Final question. If you don't get this right, you don't get the special prize. Are you nervous? Uh a little bit. <clears throat> the last Pimp C trivia question. I'm Pimp C bitch, so what the fuck is up? Putting powder on the street because that would got big fucking nuts. Oh, that's it. Ding, ding, ding. Julia Beverly for the win. Gonna clap your hands, gonna stomp your feet, gonna get right up, gonna move your meat. He's my buddy, Drew the View. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in. This is Drew the View. And today we have a very, very special guest um, calling in to the studio. Uh, this young lady, she's a hero of mine, she's a, a writer a photographer, a runner, a cyclist, uh, founder of the first Southern hip hop magazine, Ozone magazine and author of my favorite book of all time. Sweet Jones, Pimp C's true life story. She just biked all the way across the country, uh, on a tour called, uh, bike the U S for MS. Tell everybody what you did. You biked um, from California to Florida. Yeah, it, it does sound kind of crazy when you say it out loud, but yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I've been on a, a you know, I've, I've had some, I've had some time on my hands this year. I put out the Pimp C book last year, which you know, you, you made it, you made it sound really, that was a really good intro there. Um, but uh, the book came out last July. We did a pretty extensive promo tour for that, and uh, so by the end of 2015, I was kind of finished with that project and just kind of looking for the next, you know next adventure to go on so I, I signed up for a bunch of trips you know i went and hiked the inca trail and it, is it true um did you like after you got done uh with the biking like two days later you ran the uh the marathon in new york city is that right uh it was about a week later okay. but yeah and <laughs> I'm I'm definitely uh I'm I'm feeling that. I'm still feeling that today. I I I, re I really want to talk about the book and stuff. Like I said, it's my it's my favorite book I've ever read. But um before we get into that, uh the thing that I really want to know and I think a lot of people out there want to know is what what are you going to do next? Do you have anything uh like artistically or I mean, that's the question I get a lot and you know, I I don't really know. I mean, even, you know, if you had asked me a few months ago, I wouldn't have said, you know, that I was going to ride my bike across the country, but right. I kind of just uh I kind of just take life as it comes. You know, I have a lot of I have a ton of ideas and stuff, but um you know, sometimes circumstances have to kind of align or, you know, you might, you gotta, you gotta learn how to take signs from, you know, from God or the universe or whatever you believe in, you know, things will kind of point you in the right direction. You know, when it comes to like launching, uh, even when I started Ozone or when I published the book, like there has to be a need for something, you know, when, right. when I started Ozone, there, there was no outlet really for a lot of these artists or for the whole community as far as the Southern rap community there was no outlet and so that's why I was successful and the book Julia uh it took you five years to to write the book is that correct yeah and um so I, I, while we're getting into it you know might as well let people know the title and everything Sweet Jones uh Pimp C's True Life Story it's on Amazon if you want to check it out but um yeah it was a it was a, a lengthy process of doing a lot of research and um and then ultimately you know sitting down to kind of combine everything into a, a cohesive format so it was initially 1200 pages and then you uh you uh, edited it to about 700 um can you tell me like one of your favorite stories that you had to cut out of those 500 pages i'm like i, I think um i think i did include this in the book but mike mo who is one of pimp's engineers talked about a time when tim came to his house you know to record something and he had these like eight hundred dollar jeans on me at this guy and Mike said, Oh, I like those jeans and, yeah. and Pimp just took them off and, here <laughs> and then left, you know, in his boxes or whatever. So one of the things a lot of people, you know, talk to me about and I've talked to people about 
is uh, Pimp C saying that he saw Tupac. Um, and, you know, for the listeners, Tupac had been dead for years at that time. Uh, can you tell, like, how you found that out? And uh, Yeah, his mom said that he um, he started saying that while he was in prison, that he was basically had seen Tupac. While he was in prison, wow. Yeah, yeah. and, um, you know, she said at first she thought that he was kind of just joking around or trying to be funny, but, you know, over time she was like, he was serious, like, he, he really meant it. And, uh, you know, even the night before he, he passed, um, one of the one of his associates, I guess her, he was in the car with his girlfriend, the, with his friend's girlfriend. And he was saying, he was in the back seat and she heard him saying something and she turned around and said, you know, what, who are you talking to? And he said, you know, he's talking to Tupac. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't only, uh, his mother who said that, but there were, there were several other people. So I, you know, you never know with Pimp. I mean, Pimp, you know, sometimes like to get a reaction out of people. So he, he might have, he might have been, you know, he might have been uh, having a little fun with it, or he might have been completely serious. I, I'm not sure. Uh, thank you so very much for coming on the show. Um, you inspire, I, I think, uh, a lot of people, whether you, whether you know it or not, thank you for all that you do, and we're so excited to, to see what you'll do next, sister. <clears throat> this is Drew The View on WWLX. <laughs> Time was in the summer of 1978. I was at a rodeo in bull riding, and they uh, it's on a Saturday night, and they uh, a storm came in that rained out the the bull riding part of it, and they told us to uh, we'd come back and ride on Sunday. And whenever I went to my truck, my aunt was with me. She was already sitting in my truck. When I grabbed the door handle, lightning struck my, my truck and uh, knocked me back, you know, four or five feet land on the ground, of course, you know, when you're 18 years old, you know, you just don't think a whole lot about it, and it just, you know, made me sore. The second time was in 1994. Uh, I was down at Noble, uh -huh. and uh, me and a friend was moving a, uh, a house, a little playhouse, yeah. up onto a flatbed trailer, and lightning hit a, uh, I had a pry bar, about a, probably a six-foot pry bar, uh, lightning hit the uh, uh transformer up above us and it went through that went through that bar in my hands and just kind of you know jolted me you know through that pry bar now whenever you know a storm comes up are you really really ca cautious about yes okay, yes right. I, I very, very so, much so i mean you know in the beginning i you know you kind of i thought to myself well it couldn't happen again i mean you know you keep you keep thinking there's no way it can happen again and i mean at work you know if it storm comes up they'll be calling on radio to make sure i'm inside somewhere the same way. <laughs> yeah 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 i have friends and my daughters and everybody they they'll text me or message me you know hey storm's coming you better get inside carl tell me about the third time if you would that you been struck yeah the third time was in 1996 and uh it was on a friday and i was working on a uh on a street light cable that had burnt in two i was laying down on my uh on, you know, laying down and down into a hole, putting these cables back together, and lightning struck a uh, forty-foot cypress tree on the other side of the oval, and and knocked the top out of a streetlight uh, pole, and then went and basically it followed that wire around to where I was working, and it went through one arm to the other, and it burnt my chest, and I was in the hospital then, I think like three days. Fourth time was in nineteen ninety-nine. It was basically on May 4th when the tornado came through, and this one was kind of stupid. I was standing outside of a friend's house, uh, 
south of uh, Noble because we went over there to the cellar. And I was standing out underneath a tree watching the storm in the distance and hanging on to a uh, chain that hung a uh, glider in a tree. Carl, why were and, you hanging on to a chain? I know. That's what I, I know. <laughs> anyway, lightning hit that hit the tree and come down that knocked me over against the house. Do you sometimes being struck by lightning so many times, I, I imagine you think like, have I done something wrong? exactly <laughs> do, yeah do you ever think that do you ever have that conversation with yourself uh like, yeah oh yeah i've i've wondered i've wondered things you know a million times you know why the uh, discovery channel come and did a, a deal and they had a guy check uh a, a normal person has like six volts dc in his body okay and whenever they tested me i was 1.9 volts and so basically in a sense that makes me more conductive than a normal person. If you would, Carl, tell me about the, the next time, the fifth time you've been struck. It was in 2005, and working at OU on North Campus by the airport, uh, we were working on a, a water main break, that, and the grass was all soaked in water. And I had a pair of tennis shoes on, had a hole in the toe, and uh, whenever lightning struck, everybody else had rubber boots on and stuff, and it, it struck the basically the backhoe, and and went, you know, followed out through the water, and my foot bounced off the ground two or three times and knocked me back on the apron of the airport. And I was in the hospital, I think, four days that time because it kind of messed up my heart rhythm. Do you wear rubber boots now? Yeah, well, I try not to go out there when they're done. I let yeah. them take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the last time that you've been struck by lightning was your sixth time, right? Yes. In 2006, we had a drought, and, and hay was pretty hard to come by, and I'd had a, a load of alfalfa hay come in, and I was and there was a kind of a freak storm came up. And so I ran out there to uh, put a tarp on, on that alfalfa, and, and I was putting a, I to throw a, tar, a tire up, uh, up on top of it, told the tarp down. Right. About the time I threw the, the tire up there is when lightning struck. And all I seen was bright lights and woke up on the ground. Well, Carl, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and and, uh, and sharing these experiences with us. Um, I bet. really I really hope that you know this doesn't happen again. And uh, I'm sure you you hope and pray for the same thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, so you so your advice to folks uh, if a storm comes one more time. Yeah, if, if you know you know storms coming, it can dang sure travel away and get you. Well, I appreciate the advice, man. Uh, I hope you stay safe and and thank you so much for coming again on our show, Carl. You bet. Thank you. This is Drew the View on WWLX. <laughs> the view in the morning on 109.9 wwlx fm all interviews are copyrighted and cannot be redistributed or recorded in part or whole without written consent views of today's guests don't necessarily reflect the views of this station i'll never root for him again man don't let kevin Durant come back i will be the fucking anti-thunder fan i will go to the nba store and i will get one of those create your own jerseys and I will get a fucking 35 Oklahoma City jersey, and I'll put a fucking Judas on the back of that fucking jersey. As a matter of fact, that's what I want for Christmas.